My name is Sergei Murjevsky, and you're watching Skull Talk. Today we're going to talk about the clouded leopard, Neophilis nebulosa. There are two different species, one on the mainland of Asia in India, Thailand, the Malay Peninsula, and the Borneo subspecies, Neophilis diardi. They both have a particular feature. They're oversized canines. Now, although they're not related at all to the Machairodontine saber-toothed cats of old, they do have very long canines. In fact, their canines are proportionally longer than any big cat. Along with the lengthening of its canines come a whole variety of different adaptations that, although slight, kind of put them together in the same category uh, of feeding, biting behavior as the saber tooths. This is a skull of a male cat. That is true because of the size of the sagittal crest, the overall, the overall size of the skull, which is large in terms of the species, and the proportion of the teeth. The skull itself is of a very interesting shape. The sagittal crest is very well developed. The lambdoidal crests are very developed. The mastoid process is ventrally reflected down, suggesting a very long winged atlas bone, which is the vertebrae to which the skull attaches, and a very strong nodding action. The jaw is also very interesting because the coronoid process, just like in saber-toothed cats, is reduced and dorsally oriented, allowing, its, allowing the cat to open its mouth very wide and allowing it to clear and have clearance for its large canines. This is not a real skull. This is a replica from Bone Clones, a company that has very good, very good quality products. I must stress that this is not a saber-toothed cat. This animal is very much of the panther, panthera, lineage. It's a very early member of that lineage and I speculate that along with uh, Panthera blythea who lived in uh, the Himalayas, the clouded leopard was the cat that was first, that first in infiltrated the forest. It is quintessentially a forest cat. It prefers very covered, very close, very dense habitats. It's a stocky little cat. It has very short little legs, um, flexible wrists, flexible ankles, and a very long, muscular, flexible tail. These are all adapt adaptations that allow it to be an expert tree climber. A lot of the diet of the clouded leopard consists of, in fact, monkeys, macaques, uh, primates, as well as some forest ungulates such as pigs, such as munjack, and other small deer. However, it is adept at hunting in the trees, and when it is in the trees, it will hunt down large squirrels and monkeys. Very difficult to catch and very difficult to kill because there's a lot of them and they look out for each other. Hence, I think, um, the evolution of such long and uh, precise killing hardware. This is a hunter of very difficult prey that has to stalk it in the forest, in the trees, and then catch and dispatch this, um, their prey in the tree branches and even perhaps in midair. Nobody really knows how the cloud leopard hunts because it hunts way up in the trees and nobody's, ever, and nobody's ever been able to film it, at least not to my knowledge. And for a hunting method that puts it out of the way of its much larger brethren. This cat can share a habitat with tigers, leopards that are much larger than itself, and then also smaller cats such as the golden cat, the marbled cat, um, and the Asian leopard cat. 
And because of its specialized killing technique, habits, and diet, it is able to to survive and thrive unharmed amongst its other larger brethren by being more specialized. Unfortunately, throughout its range, the clouded leopard experiences uh, direct threats from people. It is often poached for its pelt. The bones are sent to the bone market in uh, China. And the skulls and teeth are used, skulls, teeth, and claws that are used, I believe, in ornamental purposes or witchcraft purposes, as well as habitat destruction. The subspecies in Borneo has been known to cope, uh, but I don't know if they thrive in um, the newly degraded uh, forests that are allocated to palm oil, palm oil plantations. Thank you for watching. That's all I'm going to say about the clutter leopard for now. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And if you have any questions or something or other things that you'd like to hear about the skull or any of the skulls behind me, write down a question and I might even just make a video about your question specifically. So thank you for tuning in. You're watching Skull Talk.